had a Fortress battery that kind of went to zero. I'm not exactly sure why, because it was three other batteries. And uh, the internet was really bad there. Long story short, I got it hooked up and with uh, Fortress's help, got it connected and got the latest firmware installed on this battery. And I was thankful to have this lithium battery uh, charger for my golf cart and because I needed a charger. I tried my e-bike chargers just to wake it up. So what ended up happening, we ended up putting the lithium e-bike charger and the uh, golf cart charger because the golf cart charger has three pins. So I was looking for a ground. It couldn't, just couldn't reconcile. It just uh, needed uh, something to help it out. So the e-bike charger got it started and uh, so that, that helped tremendously and uh, was able to get this thing charged. So we're about 60% SOC, I think. And I got the software on here now, so now I can go to the other batteries and put the latest firmware on there. So anyway, just coming up to speed with uh, how to do the CAN bus. I think all of this is gonna go away and they're gonna make it much easier to uh, update batteries via the firmware. But for now, we got to get creative. Engineer 775, back on a install that I did about a year and a half ago, I guess. And um, I had one, this battery kind of went off the cliff, and I don't know why. So, but it, all the other batteries were working fine, and this one wouldn't respond. So I took it home with me and uh, charged it up, uploaded um, firmware. The latest firmware from Fortress to the battery, and that's what I'm doing now. Now that I've uploaded the firmware to that one, I'm just going around and uploading the firmware to this battery. What Fortress sends you is a little CAN bus tool, and I'm connected into the CAN port of the, each battery, connected to my laptop, and then there's a program that you run. This little BR, BMS connection tool. And I'll show you that here if you can see it. I don't know if you can. And I've already downloaded the firmware from their website. So I've got to connect, I make a CAN connection to the battery. CAN is connected. And then it sees the battery. The battery has to be turned on, which I did. Turned it on, 53.2. And so now I'm going to update down here. Update the firmware. I'm going to go find the file. I've already got the file here in my eFlex firmware, and it's the latest 2275 version. I'm going to open that, and then I'm going to run. You'll hear a relay click. It'll shut the battery off for a second. There it goes. It shut. You hear that relay click, and then the firmware is uploading to the battery. It's a pretty fast process. Shuts the battery off, uploads the firmware, And uh, all this is best to do at home. They have horrible cell service here. So you want to get the software on your laptop. You want to get the firmware downloaded to your laptop. You want to be ready to just plug and play without an internet connection. And so that brings the battery back up. And we are software version 2275. You can see it there is loaded up there. So we're good. So all four batteries have received... A 2275 firmware update. Now we're going to check on all the voltages of each battery, and we need to have them within a half a volt in order to turn them on. It's dangerous to turn on a lithium battery. Like, say this is at 50 volts and this one's at 56 volts. You have a massive inrush of current to that battery that could damage the battery. So the guidelines on Fortress is half a volt, ARC is 0.3 volts, um, so every manufacturer has their limit of how much inrush they'll accept. So make sure, oh, we got relays of click in here. All right, so I'm gonna, we're gonna make our closed loop connection, CAN bus connection to um, this. I probably need to do a software update on the um, inverter too. And the cool thing now, you can go to Solark's website and set, you can uh, schedule your software update as long as the plant can be seen by Solar via internet connection, then you can do that. I'm probably gonna do that.
But for now, we're just gonna see if we can close loop these, but I gotta get the batteries to be within the same or half a volt and we'll have to run some loads to play that game and charge up some, load up some other. So here we go. All right, we have um, updated all the firmware in these bat on these batteries, reconnected them. And we had one battery that was higher, about two volts higher than the other three batteries. So we put a load to bring it down so that we were within a half a volt on all the batteries before we turned them on. And uh, actually we had that one on the high one. We got a load and we got it down to 53. These were all 53, then we turned them on. So it all leveled out. And these are all daisy chained together. There is a termination connector here and then we start going. This is battery one, two, three, four. And then we come off of battery one, closed loop connection to the CAN bus port in the Solar. So that gives you the ability to see this battery. Now it treats it like one battery, one battery bank. And it doesn't give you a lot of info, but you get to see the voltage, 53.2. Um, technically, the settings can be a little different with when you have closed loop, you have tighter control over the battery with this inverter. And then also you have this uh, lithium battery info button that comes up. And where does that come from? In your battery setup, you click, you check BMS lithium battery and oh, Modbus 4. And then just double check all your battery settings and you should be good. All right, so this is a hybrid system, battery backup system, grid cell, and uh, not making enough to sell right now. It's a cloudy, rainy day. Got a lot of those lately. But we're making enough solar to charge the battery and run the load, we're running a mini split. And this is in a kind of a shop and uh, we're running on solar. And, but we have the potential to run the house down here because we have another bypass on the other side of the, the meter base. So the whole exercise here was to revive a battery. We're not exactly sure why that went to zero. And so then we, uh, we got them updated and everything's running well. And just doing a little service call. It's Engineer 775 signing out.